Hey everyone, this is Jack from the Cardboard Herald, and today we are doing a review of the new Nemo's War 2nd Edition Ultimate Edition, which if you're wanting a gameplay review of Nemo's War itself, we've already got you covered. I'm going to link that in the description below. We did a review of Nemo's War 2nd Edition as a base game, as it's presented, and now we're kind of doing like a product review of this new Ultimate Edition, as well as some of the new content that is simultaneously released, available separately, but also combined into this nice and neat package from Tabletop Tycoon DBA, as uh, Victory Point Games. So the Tabletop Tycoon has like this whole umbrella of different brands underneath them. But bottom line, we have a new packaging of this now celebrated, famous, infamous single player focus game. So what all do you get in this reportedly ultimate edition of Nemo's War? This is a consolidation of all released second edition expansion content, including the simultaneously kickstarted and released along with this ultimate edition, Journey's End expansion. Aside from that, this is the same game with virtually the same box, same components, same visual identity adorned with the same superb Eno Tool illustrations, such that you really aren't missing anything if you bought this stuff individually. So much so that a like criticism is that the ultimate edition board hasn't even been updated to reflect the notoriety fail states for the expansion motives, just as if you were buying piecemeal all along. Now, the older expansions were smaller, more bite-sized additions to the game. Nautilus upgrades brought, well, more Nautilus upgrades. Bold and Caring threw in two new motives, the sort of contextual thrust that not only changes some of the starting parameters and narrative stakes of the game, but also changes the multipliers on various victory point sources, steering you toward different roads in what is really quite a sandboxy adventure. Then the Dramatis Personae expansion had a few adventure cards to shuffle into the adventure decks that make up the round-by-round -round escapades and side quests each time you play. But Journey's End is bigger than the lot of them. It's expansion AF. Piracy and World Order are two excellent new stern motives. It's got new Nautilus upgrades, finale cards, personality tokens that randomize little one-time or ongoing buffs on the spendable crewmates, more adventure cards, a new Imperial vs. Nemo 1 vs. 1 competitive play mode, and the tools to introduce the acquirable new crewmate Nadine Dakar, Nemo's estranged son. Starting out of play, Nadine pops up about halfway through with his initial family reunion card, which you know is going to result in some father-son drama later on in an unwanted reflections card. Similar to finales, there are multiple of each that are semi-randomized in the deck, creating a potent emergent narrative punch that the game's unique three-act structure treads on so well, weaving immersive storytelling with high mechanical stakes on account of the point-scoring possibilities of Nadine and his own unique personality tokens that give him a distinct flavor each game. To be honest, I didn't try the two-player mode in Journey's End, since Nemo's War is always going to be a solo first joint for me, but having the expansion is an absolute delight. What it adds feels organic and carefully executed, embellishing on the best elements of all prior content, making the game, and effectively the ultimate edition, feel comprehensive, definitive, endlessly replayable, yet not overly robust. Probably my favorite thing about having all of this material collected together is that you have several more motives to work with, both with the older expansions and now with the new Journey's End expansion. You have so many motives that are going to give you just different thrusts and, and, and different capabilities in each of the games, which is really one of the biggest joys to me is seeing the differences in playing with one motive versus another, even if you see repeats of certain cards and scenarios and situations, it's totally recontextualized in a way that makes it exciting and invigorating, and then testing yourself over and over again with the same motive to see, can I do better? Can I lean into this in a different way? What new situations are going to come up that are going to either hinder or help? It's not quite like character classes in another game, but it's not quite unlike character classes in another game. 
the best way of thinking about these is that it just contextualizes what is otherwise an awesome solo or cooperative game. The great thing about having all of this content together is that because of the game's pliable framework, the expansions don't fall into the oh-so-common trap of overtaxing the game's design. Nemo's War is a game where the rule set presents options, but the cards, ships, characters, experiences, dice rolls, and of course, your choices are what gives it the lush character the game is lauded for. More adventures? Great! Shuffle them in. Personality traits for your crew that operate similar to treasure tokens? Nice! New motives? Awesome! They are such cool new ways to recontextualize the things that you were already able to do in the game. Aside from the now various multiplayer modes, the expansions are less about changing the fundamental experience of the game and more about using existing strengths to create new strategic challenges, to tell new stories, to add texture, color, and depth. Okay, so by now you all know that I'm a big fan of Nemo's War. If you didn't know that by the previous review, then just by the tone of this, you're probably picking up what I'm putting down here, which makes it such a no-brainer for me to recommend the Ultimate Edition at this point. If you are new to Nemo's War and you have the slightest inclination that this is going to be your type of game, then I have no problem saying dive in with this. I love having all the different motives together so you have that different context for each of the games and I really love it in Journey's End, just the, the nice addition of the new finales and Nemo's son, Nadine Dakar, because it really emphasizes that this is a progressive arc, that this is a storytelling game. You had the Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 elements of the original game that gave it kind of this gravitas that goes so far beyond the narrative structure of your typical adventure games. And then Nadine Dakar's presence, the mixing in of the cards adds this re-emphasis of this story arc and that there is character progression, that these are events unfolding in a certain order that are escalating, taking you to the end. It really ties a nice bow on this whole adventure. So that's it. That is our review of Nemo's War Ultimate Edition. One of the best single player games out there and now in one of the best consolidations of all the material that you could possibly get for a solo focused player and that's our review but let me know what are your thoughts are you a nemo's war diehard what did you think of the new expansion and what are your favorite alternatives to this game when you're not getting it to the table what are some of the best solo games that you've played in recent memory and what are some of the games out there that have had a lot of expansion material that has been released and maybe is hard to obtain over the years and you'd like to see get a similar treatment all released at once in the comments below as always thanks for watching thanks for supporting thanks for being awesome i've been jack the cardboard herald